she loves to cook because it's like chemistry at home. She's a materials engineer, graduated from the Federal University of Santa Catarina in Brazil. She got her PhD here in Belgium at the University of Mons, uh, working on non-toxic electrochemical baths for metal coatings. It's quite complicated for me too. <laughs> but today she's working as a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Ghent, and you will soon find out what it is she's working on exactly. So let's welcome Dr. Louisa Bonin. Hi. Uh, thank you, Lucy, for the really nice introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to me to be here and talk a tiny bit about what I'm doing in Ghent now. So as you, you said before, I have been trying to make some process a bit more environmental friendly since my PhD. And I think it's what really makes me be in science still today. Uh, so what I'm working now in Ghent is to try to make extraction of lithium a bit more sustainable than it is today. And okay. so before talking what we are doing, I just would like to introduce for general knowledge how is the extraction of lithium nowadays that is kind of really bad. I'm sorry for the ones that are really looking for green cars or using batteries as we all are with phones, but the extraction of lithium is still a, a big problem. Um, so 60% of all the lithium that we have nowadays in the world is in brines. That's just a really salty water, let's say 10 okay. times more salty than uh, the sea. And as lithium is this super energy uh, element, he's always with other elements. So these waters also have a lot of other salts, principally sodium, sodium chloride. So it's kind uh, of locked into it. Yeah, so they are all mixed in this water. And the problem is how to extract lithium without extract the other. So mm -hmm. the most used thing, what they do, they have this so big lakes. Uh, we are talking, there's some lakes that have the size of Hawaii. So we are talking wow, about that's huge. Uh, like huge lakes and like four kilometers deep. So they take the water of these lakes, they put in some swimming pools, let's call it like that, but there are ponds. And there the brine stay for two years just in under evaporation because then you can concentrate even more and, and keep the lithium there. So why this work? Because we are talking about a desert region that is in South America between Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina. Okay. So yeah, there's a lot of sun evaporation works, but takes two years and a lot of water that's evaporated in a desert. So that it's really bad. Yeah, it cannot be used really more. It's really bad for the community. And when this is evaporated, even this concentrated water needs to go to a chemical plant. And there you have much more salts that are added to, to be able to precipitate lithium and you have more fresh water that needs to be added also okay. in the chemical process. So yeah, it's becoming problematic. Just If I can just exemplify, if you take a, a, a Tesla car, you have 45 kilograms of lithium carbonate what is like nine kilos of lithium, let, let's say like that. And for this nine kilos of lithium, you need to evaporate 4,500 liters of water. It's like the whole volume of the car of water that is evaporated and lost for like one single battery. For just one car. And much more chemicals that need to be added and a lot of waste because the other metals that are present in the water just become waste. So it's, it's a really important like environmentally intensive yes. process, uh, but it's not expensive because it's like sun and and because of that, people are still doing it because yeah, yes, it's economically interesting. So yeah, what we do, we try to make this process a bit more sustainable, much more sustainable. We try to recover the other metals. We try to recover lit lithium and principally we don't lose water. Okay, uh, and how do you go about that? Yeah. So what is interesting is that we use something that's really close to a battery to make materials for a battery. What we use calls an electrochemical cell. And in this electrochemical cell, we also use a membrane. And with that, we are able to move the ions as we want. We, we can work with different fluxes and different potentials that we apply in this electrochemical cell. And we have some membrane so we can make water migrate to one side and the elements migrate to the other. So we concentrate, we do the same as sun is doing. And in a further step, we recover CO2. So there is also this recovery of carbon dioxide. It's really important. 
that is flushed in the solution, and with this flush, we can precipitate lithium carbonate. That is the final product. So it's a really interesting process because working with these electrochemical cells, we can recover also the other metals. Uh, the interesting part is that in the electrochemical cell, you always have what we call uh, water splitting. That simply is just take the molecule of water, breaking it in a part that's acid and a part that's base. So we are talking about H plus and hydroxides. Mm -hmm. And with this change in the pH, we can precipitate hydroxides, for example. So we can precipitate magnesium as magnesium hydroxide and calcium as calcium hydroxide. So... And you can use all yeah, these exactly. other metals as well. Exactly. We don't right. have waste. We have byproducts in that case. Okay. So this is basically the process that we have been optimizing here in the University of Ghent. And we have a pretty important partner in Argentina. So they are really inside of this uh, lithium triangle region. So always we test things with um, a synthetic brine. That's a simulation, let's say, of the brine. And they test with the real liquid because yes. they are really in, course, inside. All these lakes are over there. So yeah. here you, you develop the method, but you have to go over there to to yeah. try it out on a large scale, because here it's it's small scale, I guess. It's just yeah. a little yeah, yeah. lab. Yeah, all that we, we have been testing here are reactors that we, we make ourselves, and these reactors have like one, two liters of volume. So okay. we are always testing in, in really small scale. Okay, right. well, I think we have a question. Uh, do you already use those for certain machines? Um, those, I think... It's probably it's, the reactors, Yes. No? Yeah. Maybe, so, I'm not sure. I think the question came before, but maybe you yeah. can answer this I, I, one as I well. think the question is about the reactor. So, yeah, this kind of electrochemical cells with membranes is uh, what our, our group in Ghent do as a, a main uh, a knowledge, let's say. So we use this a lot for water treatment in general. So you can use this to metal recovery from wastewater, for example. You can use the same system as where the idea comes from. Okay. So the same system can be can be used for, for other applications. And are there any any downsides to it? Because it seems like it's just all positives. You have no waste. It's uh, yeah. much more sustainable. So there, there is one... Uh, I, I I don't know if I call this a downside, but the down the downsides, the energy consumption. Oh, we we are replacing sun for, by electrical for electricity. So yes. we we need to to supply the cells with uh, electricity with the energy because we need to have this these ions migrate migrating. And for that, we need energy. So okay. we will need a lot need of to energy to, to do that. Um, this is the downside. The good point is that we are talking about one of the regions in the world that has more sun, so we can always think about uh, renewable energy and solar energy principally in that case. But mm -hmm. yes, uh, nowadays the process is much more expensive than what they do because we need the energy. And we are talking nowadays in Argentina four cents for kilowatt hour more or less. So this will this will be a more much more expensive mm. process than what they they have nowadays. But if we go as we are seeing that world is migrating to much more sustainable energy process, and if we can obtain this uh, via solar, for example, th this can be used. But yeah, this is the downside now. Okay, and so how much of of all the lithium that we need to to sustain uh, maybe all the cars being on, run on batteries, being green cars? Do you think we can extract this all with, with this method? Yeah, so this is a really good question. So nowadays, uh, if the question is, do we have lithium for transform all the cars in electric cars? Mm -hmm. So in Earth, yes, we have. So this is okay. kind of good news because lithium is really common on Earth. It's as common as copper. Uh, we have lithium in seawater. We have lithium in, in multiple places, let's say, not just in these waters, but there is where they are more concentrated. Uh, our process is still under development. Uh, we could make this process work for, for, for all the cars. Probably in the future, yes, uh, it, we still need to develop a lot. But the biggest advantage is that if we use this kind of process, you can start the extraction today and have the lithium carbonate still today or in some hours. Oh. And the process that they use um, 
nowadays needs 24 months of sun. It's quite a big so, difference. Yeah, is where the gap is because uh, with the forecast for growing in electric cars and the forecast for lithium process, we, we can we have a big gap. Mm -hmm. So we need new process. There's a lot of persons working in new process for that. Right. So we have we have several questions. Um, Someone asked, Leonardo asked, how about batteries in Europe? Uh, is, I'm not I sure. I think lithium in Europe or batteries in Europe. Yeah, so I have a general answer that. So I, there's two, two important points for Europe. So if we ask, do we have lithium in Europe? Then, okay, even seawater has lithium. So we have, but the source of lithium that we have in, in Europe are much less concentrated than mm. what we have in South America. We have in geothermal geothermal water that have lithium, and the biggest uh, source of lithium in Europe nowadays is in Finland, but is rock uh, rocks rocks that have lithium. So they uh, extract it through mining. Yeah, not that, through this. then it's like mining process that we mm. could adapt, but is 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 another process, and. But yeah, the biggest source that Europe has as lithium is the old batteries because batteries also have a, a lifetime. And after ah, yes. that, we could recover all the lithium. So there is Belgium's company starting to do that. Once more, the, the biggest problem will be the price as the lithium that's made by Sun is so non-expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always much more expensive when you need to do a process. So the, recyc the recyclability of the batteries it, 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 it's not a problem. The problem that will be much more expensive to recycle a battery than, than do a new. Okay. Um, well, another question from Ketien is um, how to lower the cost of, of, of this process to make it more attractive to businesses? Because you said yeah. they use the non-sustainable way because it's much less expensive, but could we find a way to make it economically attractive? Yeah, there, there is there is two important points. One here is low the price of electricity. That's something mm -hmm. that's is being uh, demonstrating that is happening now. So there is some so solar installation that are arriving to have uh, kilowatt hour hour for one cents already. So we are going in that direction, and it's it's what we we will need to make this process. Uh, more interesting. Uh, it's sure that we can, we, when we go to a bigger scale, normally the price also go low. We still in really small scale. So this is one point. And the other point is also, there is a moment that we need to start to have some regulations from the governments and stop this kind of process. And then then yes. th this will be the needs way. needs to come also. from the top. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to have kind of rules that they cannot do that. Okay. Because uh, and then uh, one question uh, that is maybe less uh, in your in your field because you are doing lithium extraction. But on on the topic of batteries, is there another thing we can use other than lithium? Like graphene has been suggested. Is yeah, that possible? Gra graphene. There is batteries with graphene, but uh, it's also a really expensive material still, mm -hmm. and and we still need lithium. So. Nowadays, the biggest point in batteries is not to replace lithium because, as I said, we have a lot. Is to replace cobalt that is also with lithium in the battery, and in okay. that case, cobalt we don't have a lot in the world, and almost everything that we have is concentrated in one or two countries. So there is a, a lot of like geopolitical problems uh, behind cobalt. So all these studies in changing composition of uh, of batteries have been more dedicated to replace cobalt than replace lithium because lithium is not a big issue in that way because as we have it it's just a question of make it better yes. but not replace it seems so complicated because you have to think also about the geopolitics and and you have to take so many things into account to find a good way to make renewable energy the yeah, it's complex. Uh, all all big process, I say, are like that, and it's sometimes frustrating because you cannot just yeah deal with the geopolitical parts. Yes. No, we we can do what what we can for the chemistry and and the metallurgy behind 
but the geopolitical what what we can do is, is the same as everyone that's listening it can, can do is always press and vote correctly and yes are you and, sometimes and the frustrated by politics thinking like oh no i have this good way of doing something and and they're not all paying the time is probably the answer but oh. uh, uh, you, you, we should not be blocked by frustrations. It's just that, but yeah, mm. um, keep going. Yeah, we should keep going, but we should we should not lose the the, the energy to do something different mm. at least. But yeah, should be different. But all right. Um, um, another question then: uh, Are lithium batteries already recycled? How is the current process different from the new one? So yeah. Uh, lithium batteries are current uh, recyclable, so there is a uh, old method that w in is still in use. That's the principal method to use it to to recycle lithium batteries. That is a method that, simply speaking, you just uh, melt all the components that are in the battery, and. This process is done to recover cobalt. As I explained, it is the most rare metal that we have inside of a battery. Okay. So the focus there is to recover all the cobalt and the lithium is not really treated. Lithium stay in what we call a slag and this slag becomes bricks it's because lithium was also used a lot in ceramics. So okay. in that case, we have a rec recyclability of cobalt that can be reused in a new battery. But what we have for lithium is not really a recycle because we don't restart a cycle. We, we send lithium to a, a lower category, let's say, to be used in bricks and not more in batteries. Yes. This okay. is the old method. Uh, there is a lot of studies for new methods. Most part of them are based in leaching all the metals. So they are all uh, added in a really acidic uh, solution so and then they dissolve and then in that case we can treat this this water more or less as we treat brines to have this uh, you start over yeah we start over uh, we can use solvents to to recover lithium. there's plenty of methods in, under study uh, it's something under development um, one, once more uh, probably we will need this if we still want to have batteries and more cars and everything. So yes. it's under development and it's changing yeah, from the previous method because now we are looking for recovered lithium also, not just cobalt. Okay, well, we will try to address the two last questions that have come. Um, how will the future look like? Do you think things will change? Will we continue with lithium? It's, uh, it's an open question. Really open question. Like uh, I, I can what I can give here is my personal opinion. Yes, <laughs> uh, I think we will go with lithium for still long running uh, mm. for a long time. Um, okay. If you look the chemical table of elements, you see that is really the smallest one with uh, energy. So it, there is some certain limitations. Um, so lithium is really what we call energy dense. So you have a lot of energy in a really small element. Okay. Um, there is also batteries of sodium, for example, that's one of the neighbors of lithium, but they, they, they are not the same. So if we want to have a really small uh, battery, I think we will go. And I think we should not stop to use is a metal that we have a lot and there is mm. no, no really an issue in that. We just need to, to, to learn how to yes. do the extraction in a better way. And then we'll be really using green cars. Really? <laughs> All right, the last question um, from Aline. She's asking, maybe not your scope, but talking about sustainability. Is it possible to recycle batteries, reuse lithium that's inside? I think it's related or yeah, almost yeah, the yeah, same. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it's before. really similar to the question yes. that we have before. Yes, it is possible, completely possible. Uh, there's a lot of work in that. That's is in development. There is companies already doing that. Um, Could you keep doing it endlessly, just reusing all the lithium on Earth until... Yeah, we could. Um, there is no chemical limitations for that, but we could do. Okay. So, there, yeah, let's say that we... Everything is possible. Ev <laughs> chemically is possible. Uh, yes. It's just a question to, will this be economically interesting or not? Okay, well... Uh, Thank you very much, Luisa. You, it's been very interesting, very complex, but <laughs> thank you for explaining. <laughs>